So corresponding to the four wholesome supramundane consciousness, there are four resultant supramundane consciousness. They are called fruit consciousness or fruition consciousness. In actual occurrence, fruit consciousness immediately follows the path consciousness. So there is no time interval between the path consciousness and its corresponding fruit consciousness. Immediately after the cessation of first path consciousness, the first fruit consciousness arises. And immediately after the second part consciousness has ceased, then the second fruit consciousness arises and so on. And the names are the same as the part consciousness. So stream entrant, once returner, non-returner, and arahant. The function of the wholesome supramundane consciousness is to eradicate the mental defilements. The function of the resultant supramundane consciousness is to further tranquilize the mental defilements. Wholesome Supramundane consciousness is like uh, putting out the fire. And the resultant supramundane consciousness is like pouring water onto the already extinguished fire so that it cannot burn again. So there are only wholesome supramundane consciousness and resultant supramundane consciousness. Now on the first day, I gave you an example of akaliko, the attribute of the Dhamma, that if you do not understand Abhidhamma, you do not understand the significance of the word akalika. So akalika means no time, no time in giving results. That means it does not wait for five days, seven days, or whatever but it gives results immediately. Immediately means immediately uh, after it ceases. So here is the example of that. First part consciousness is the wholesome or result producing consciousness and the first fruit consciousness is the result consciousness. So the results follow the result producing immediately without any intervention of time between them. That is why when we say Dhamma is Akalika, Dhamma has no delay in giving results, we mean the full path consciousness or the full path. Now, there are ten Dhammas, ten units of Dhamma. Four parts, four fruits, Nibbana, and the scriptures. So when we say Dhamma, uh, for example, we say Dhamma Saranangka Chami, then we take refuge in these ten kinds of Dhamma. Four, four parts, four fruits, Nibbana, and scriptures. But when we say Dhamma is Akaliko, we mean only the path not fruits, not nirvana, and not scriptures. So, when you recite the, the formula Swakato, Bhagavata, Dhammo, and so on, and when you say Swakato, it means uh, all ten kinds of Dhamma included. Swakato, Bhagavata, Dhammo, Sanditiko, that means um, nine supramundane dhammas uh, without the scriptures. That means full paths, full fruits, and nibbana. But when we say dhammo is akaliko, you mean only the paths, and not the fruits, and not nibbana. And here, in the supramundane 
type of consciousness, there are no functional consciousnesses, only wholesome and resultant. But in the sense we are, uh, consciousness, in the uh, form sphere consciousness and formless sphere consciousness, we have three categories, uh, wholesome, resultant, and functional. But here there is no functional supramundane consciousness. The reason is given below the result in consciousness. So there is no functional consciousness in supramundane consciousness because path consciousness occurs only once. Now path consciousness occurs only once for a given person. It arises in his mental continuum only once. It never repeats itself. It will never arise in his mind again. So because path consciousness occurs only once, there is no functional consciousness in supramundane consciousness. In the sense sphere, form sphere and formless sphere consciousness, you may have noticed that the, the functional consciousness is actually just a repetition of the wholesome consciousness. The same wholesome consciousness, when it arises again in the mind of an other hand, it is called functional consciousness. But here, part consciousness does not arise again it arises only once. That is why there is no functional consciousness in supramundane consciousness. If it were to occur more than once, if the path consciousness were to arise more than once, it would be possible to say that there is functional consciousness in supramundane consciousness. Because if it arises again and it arises in the mind of an other hand, it might be called to, uh, functional consciousness, but it does not arise. But part consciousness does not occur again in those who have reached any of the four stages of enlightenment because just as a lightning can destroy a tree by hitting it only once, so part consciousness can accomplish its function, which is the total eradication of mental defilements just by occurring once so that there would be nothing for it to accomplish even if it were to occur again. Now, path consciousness has the power to eradicate the mental defilements just by arising once. Even if it arises again, it will have no function to do. So, that is why it does not arise again. So, it is compared to a lightning destroying a tree. So when a tree is struck by lightning, it will never uh, live again. It is uh, totally destroyed. So in the same way, path consciousness, when it arises like lightning, it eradicates mental defilements altogether. So even if it were to arise again, it would have no function to do. That is why it does not arise again. Then, for living happily in this life, by letting it occur again and again, there is a fruit attainment in the form of successive movements of fruit consciousness to undertake that job. Now, after you gain jhana, you can enjoy the jhana by entering into it. When you are in jhana for a long time, you are relatively free from suffering. So here also, why cannot a person who has gained enlightenment get into uh, that uh, path consciousness again so as to experience or enjoy the peacefulness of path consciousness? It is because there is the fruit consciousness to take that undertaking, to do that job. So that means 
after becoming enlightened persons, when they want to enjoy the peacefulness of an enlightened man, then they will enter into what is called Phala Samapati, fruit consciousness again and again. So instead of path consciousness arise again, fruit consciousness arise again. And that fruit consciousness can arise for many times. At the first arising, fruit consciousness will arise for two times or three times only. But when a person who has gained enlightenment enters into that phalasamapati or attainment of fruit consciousness again, then the fruit consciousness can arise for billions of times as long as uh, he wishes. May one hour, two hour, or one day, two days, and so on. So, for enjoying the peacefulness of enlightenment, there is fruit consciousness. That is why path consciousness does not arise in a person. Since path consciousness arises only once, there is no functional consciousness in the supramundane consciousness. So there are only eight types of supramundane consciousness. Four path consciousnesses and four fruition consciousnesses. I feel more comfortable using Pali words than the English. <laughs> you know, saying consciousnesses, consciousnesses. So consciousness is an uncountable word and it is no plural. So if you, if you write consciousnesses and you spell check it, and then it will say you are wrong. <laughs> but when I say consciousnesses, I mean consciousness as one unit. So we, I think we can use consciousnesses also. So the same with knowledge. Sometimes we use knowledges. Okay, so the supramundane consciousness consists of only two categories, wholesome and resultant. Now, what feeling do they arise with? No color there. <laughs> I, I put both colors. <laughs> so, they can be accompanied by joy or they can be accompanied by indifference. So, when we count all 89 uh, or later 121 types of consciousness, especially 89 types of consciousness, we can uh, say that all eight types of the supramundane consciousness are accompanied by joy or accompanied by indifference. The parentheses are meant to be not parentheses actually. I do not know how to put color half red and half blue. So I use the parentheses. The left parentheses should be say, red and right should be blue. They can be either accompanied by joy or indifference. That will become clear uh, when we study further how the eight supramanian types of consciousness uh, become 40 types of consciousness. But before we go there, I would like you to look at the sheet uh, with the name Two Kinds of Jhanas. Now, so far, we have studied the jhana consciousnesses. And we use the word jhana in its technical sense with just one meaning, that is rupa vajra jhana and arupa vajra jhana, or form jhana and formless jhana. But the commentaries sometimes they wanted to give us more information. 
And that makes us confused. So the, the use of jhana can be confusing. Because commentary said that there are two kinds of jhanas. That which examines closely the object. That is one kind of jhana. It is in Pali it is called Aramanupa Nijana. It's wrong name. And then there is another jhana which examines closely the characteristics. That means the anicca, dukkha and another nature of things. So there are two kinds of jhanas. One that examines the object closely. That means that dwells on the object firmly and closely. And there is another kind of jhana that examines the characteristics, the impermanent, suffering and so non-soul nature, the characteristics closely. So there are two kinds of jhanas. But the eight attainments, that means four rubhavajara jhanas and four arubhavajara jhanas are called aramanubhani jhana, the first one, because they examine closely the object of at Kasina and so on. This is the usual jhana we understand. So when we say jhana, we almost always mean the Rubhavachara or Arubhavachara jhana. And they are called jhana because they examine closely the, the object of At Kasina, Water Kasina and so on. But what is confusing is the statement that Vipassana, Maga and Phala are also called Jhana. They are called Lakhanupa Nijjana. Lakhana means characteristic and Upa Nijjana means uh, examine closely. So Vipassana is called Lakhanupa Nijjana or, or in short Vipassana is also called Jhana. Maga is also called jhana, phala is also called jhana. So in this extension of meaning, everything can be jhana. The usual eight, four rupa vajra, four means actually five. Four or five rupa vajra jhanas and four arupa vajra jhanas are jhanas. And also vipassana, maga and phala can be called jhana. Now, Vipassana is called jhana because it examines closely the characteristics of impermanence and so on. And Maga is called jhana because the work done by Vipassana comes to be accomplished through Maga. So when one reaches the Maga, closely examining the characteristics is accomplished or is come to an end. So Maga is also called jhana. And Phala is also called Jhana because it examines closely the truth of cessation, that means Nibbana. It takes Nibbana as object and so it uh, examines closely the, the truth of Nibbana or cessation. So Phala can also be called Jhana. So according to this mm, commentary, there are many kinds of Jhana. The usual jhanas we understand, and also vipassana, maga, and phala are jhanas. Now, some people wanted to know whether there is jhana in vipassana. To answer this question first, we must ask him again, what do you mean by jhana? If you mean just examining closely as jhana, then vipassana is also jhana. Maga is also jhana. Phala is also jhana. But if you mean jhana as a, as a technical term for rubhavajara jhana and arubhavajara jhana, then there is no jhana in vipassana. Because the jhana as a technical term for rubhavajara and arubhavajara jhana takes the objects like kasina objects as object, but vipassana takes the five aggregates of clinging or 
nama and rupa as object and maga and phala takes nibbana as object so they are different now in the abhidhamma itself and in the commentaries the supramandin chaitas are described as jhanas also that means they are not real jhanas as the rupa vachara and arupa vachara consciousness are but they resemble the rupa vachara jhana and arupa vachara jhana in having the same number of jhana factors now you have not studied the second chapter of this book so you do not know the mental factors that arise uh, together with a sudden given chitta now when magga consciousness when the path consciousness arises it is said that 36 mental factors also arise among the 36 there is vitaka vichara piti and sukha as vedana and also ekagata so that path consciousness uh, resembles the first jhana because it has five jhana factors arising with it so in this way the path consciousness the first path consciousness can be divided into five jhana consciousness not not real jhanas but uh, resembling the jhana consciousness so the first path consciousness is divided into the uh, first jhana first uh, first path consciousness second jhana first path consciousness third jhana first path consciousness fourth jhana first path consciousness and fifth jhana first path consciousness so in this way first path consciousness can be expanded into five types of consciousness first jhana second jhana third jhana fourth jhana and fifth jhana the second path consciousness again can be divided into five third path consciousness five fourth path consciousness five and so when expanded there are 20 wholesome supramandane consciousness or there are 20 path consciousnesses and the resultant consciousness are the same so there is first jhana first fruit consciousness second jhana first fruit consciousness and so on fifth jhana uh, fourth jhana uh, fifth jhana first fruit consciousness and so on so there are 20 fruit consciousnesses and when we call them jhanas we do not mean that they are real jhanas like rupa vachara and arupa vachara jhanas but they are like the rupa vachara and arupa vachara jhana consciousness because they have the same number of jhana factors as those jhanas have so in this way we get 40 supramundane types of consciousness 20 wholesome or 20 magga consciousnesses and 20 fruit consciousnesses the difference between the jhanas rupa vachara jhanas arupa vachara jhanas and the subramanian jhana is given in manual so it says whereas the mundane jhanas take as their object some concept such as a sign of the casino the supramanian jhanas take as their object nibbana mundane jhanas and supramundane jhanas mundane jhanas take casino object or other 
concepts as objects. Because when you practice uh, meditation to reach uh, jhanas, you take the casino object or some other uh, objects as objects. But supramandin jhanas, maga and phala, supramandin jhanas take nibbana as object. So as to the object, they are different. The mandin jhanas take mostly concepts as object, and supramandin jhana takes nibbana as object. And second, whereas the mundane jhanas merely suppress the defilements while leaving their underlying seeds intact, the supramundane jhanas of the path eradicate defilements so that they can never arise again. Now, mundane jhanas can suppress the mental defilements. Suppress means they cannot destroy them altogether. So, these mental defilements that are suppressed by the mundane jhanas may come back. But the supramundane jhanas, especially of the past, eradicate mental defilements so that they can never arise again. So the eradication is absolute. And third, while the mundane jhanas lead to rebirth in fine material world and thus sustain existence in the round of rebirth. Now, mundane jhanas can, can lead you to rebirth in the Brahma world. So that means it sustains the existence in the round of rebirth. But the jhanas of the path cut off the fetters binding one to the cycle and thus issue in liberation from the round of birth and death. That means supramundane jhana can take you out of the round of birth and death or out of the samsara. So mundane jhana leads to rebirth. Supramundane jhana leads to no rebirth. And finally, whereas the role of wisdom in the mundane jhanas is subordinate to that of concentration. In the mundane jhanas, concentration is more important than knowledge or understanding. Because only when you have strong concentration can you get jhana. But in the supramundane jhanas, wisdom and concentration are well balanced. So at the moment of enlightenment, at the moment of the realization of truth, both wisdom and concentration must be balanced. So any one of them must not in excess of, the, of another. So in the supramundane jhanas, wisdom and concentration are balanced. Concentration, fixing the mind on the unconditioned element or on nibbana and wisdom fathoming the deep significance of the Four Noble Truths. Now concentration keeps the mind on Nibbana firmly and wisdom or understanding goes deep into the significance of the Four Noble Truths. So this is the, the difference between mundane jhanas and supramundane jhanas. It's given in, in the Comprehensive Manual of Abhidhamma on page 73. So, now we have 40 supramundane types of consciousness. Now, we have 81 mundane consciousness. 81 plus 8 supramundane consciousness, we have 89 types of consciousness. But if we expand the eight supramundane consciousness into 40, we get 121 types of consciousness. So the chart shows 121 types of consciousness. If you want to see 89 types of consciousness, then we will take the, the five-path consciousness as one-path consciousness and 
five fruit consciousness as one fruit consciousness. So in that case, uh, the first the first column is Sotapati Maga, the first Maga, and then next second Maga, third uh, next third ma- Maga, and the next fourth Maga, and then the the the, the second group. So the first column is Sotapati Phala, fruit consciousness, and second Sagadagami, third Anagami, and fourth. Arhata Phala Consciousness. So, when we take the, uh, the, the five as one, then we get 89 types of consciousness. And when we take them as 20, I mean 40, we get 121 types of consciousness. So, these 121 types of consciousness are taught in the first book of Abhidhamma called Dhammasangani. Now it is important to remember all these types of consciousness, 89 and 121, because when you come to the second chapter and so on, they will be referred to again and again. So if you do not remember, you will lose interest in the book. So please try to remember the 89 types of consciousness uh, with the help of uh, the chart or, or the cut uh, given to you. So let us do some exercise. Now the first column. The first column is what? Akusala Cheta. So unwholesome consciousness. And how many of them there are? Well, and the first are rooted in attachment. And then the two green ones are rooted in ill will, and the last two in delusion. And among these twelve, how many are accompanied by joy? Four. How many by indifference? Six. How many by displeasure? Ooh, very good. So, go to the next. Now, the first dot, what is that? Eye consciousness, right? So, eye consciousness, and, this, and then you go down. Second, second dot, ear consciousness. Third dot, nose consciousness. Full dot, tongue consciousness, and then green cross, body consciousness, and then the below, receiving consciousness, and the last one, investigating consciousness. So, they are the result of what? Wholesome or unwholesome? Unwholesome. They are the results of unwholesome consciousness or unwholesome karma. And when do these types of consciousness arise? When you experience some some desirable or undesirable object. Undesirable object. So when you see something ugly and so on. Now let us go to the second column. The first one Again, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose, tongue, and then red cross, body consciousness. And then the blue one, receiving. And the red one, investigating. And blue one, investigating. So there are two investigating consciousnesses. And this column is the result of what? Wholesome karma. So when you experience something pleasant, when you see something beautiful and so on, the consciousness belonging to this group arises in the mind. And then the last column, the last column are called functional, functional consciousness. So the one, the first one is what? Five sense door adverting. That means 
at that moment, the, the mind turns to the object presented to it. And the second one is mind door adverting. So when you, uh, when, when you do not use the five senses, but when you use your mind, when you think of something, when you remember something and so on, then the second one, mind door adverting, will turn your mind to the object. And the last one, the red one, smile producing. And it arises only in the minds of Arahants and Buddhas. And these three columns are called Ahituka Chetas. Ahituka means rootless. So they do not arise or uh, roots do not arise with these Chetas. And do you remember what roots are? Greed, hatred, delusion, non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion. So these 18 arise with none of these uh, hetus or none of these roots. So they are called ahetuka or rootless consciousness. 12 Akusala Chaitas and 18 Ahijuka Chaitas together, 30. Now these 30 are called what? Non-beautiful. Non-beautiful consciousness. So 30 non-beautiful consciousness. Now among the 18 Ahijuka Chaitas, how many are accompanied by joy? Only two. The investigation and smile producing. How many are accompanied by indifference? Fourteen. Huh? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Twelve. And then one, two, fourteen. So fourteen are accompanied by indifference. And one is accompanied by pain. And one is accompanied by pleasure. Okay, the next group, the three columns, they are called Kama Vachara Sovana, sense, fear, beautiful consciousness. And the first column is what? Wholesome, Kusala. And second column, resultant, so they are result. And the third column, functional. They arise in Arahants and Buddhas only. And among them, four are accompanied by joy and the first column. The four are accompanied by joy and the other four are accompanied by indifference. The same with the eight resultant consciousness and with functional consciousnesses. So these 24 types of consciousness are called Kama Vajara Sobhana, beautiful consciousness. Now, look at the first column of this Kama Vajara Sobhana. They are Kusala, wholesome consciousness. Wholesome consciousness are Result producing, right? So, wholesome consciousness produces results. And these eight can produce identical results as well as non-identical results. So, which are the identical results of these eight? the middle column, result and eight result and consciousness. And which are the un non-identical results of these eight? Among the Ahitukas. Because these eight are the result of the eight wholesome, beautiful consciousness. But they are not identical. So, the wholesome, beautiful consciousness can produce 
both identical and non-identical results. Let us go back to Akusala. Now, Akusala can produce results because Akusala is also re result producing. And which are the results of these 12 Akusala? The seven uh, of the first column of Ahidukha Chaita. So they are also non-identical results. So 12 Akusala Chaitas, 18 Ahituka Chaitas, and 24 Kamavajara Sovana Chaitas all together make 54 Chaitas. And they are called sense sphere Chaitas or Kamavajara Chaitas. How many are accompanied by joy? One, two, three, four, six plus twelve, eighteen. So eighteen are accompanied by joy. And how many are accompanied by indifference? One, two, three, four, five, six, six again, six again, and the two, twenty. Twenty plus twelve, thirty-two. So 32 are accompanied by indifference. And one is accompanied by pain. And again, one is accompanied by pleasure. And then we go to Rupa Vajra. Form, form sphere consciousness. The, the first column. There are five jhanas, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So first to fourth jhanas are accompanied by joy, and the fifth is accompanied by indifference. The same with the resultant, and the same with the functional consciousness. So among the Rupa Vajra Chaitas, 15 Rupa Vajra Chaitas, how many are accompanied by joy? Twelve. And how many are accompanied by indifference? Three. And we go to Aruba Vajra. There is no variety. So all are accompanied by uh, indifference. Now, we need to put one name, one name under uh, Rupa Vajra and Aruba Vajra. And that is Mahagada. Now, if you have the chart, you may write that down. Like Kamavajra Chaitas 54, you may draw a line under Rubavajra Chaitas and Arubavajra Chaitas, one line. And then under the line, you write M A H A G G a T A Mahakata and then in the parenthesis twenty seven. So fifteen Ruba Vajrachetas and twelve Aruba Vajrachetas are collectively called Mahagata Cheta. Now please remember these names because when we want to refer to these twenty seven as a whole, then we will say twenty seven Mahagata Chetas. <clears throat> so among the 27 Mahagata Chaitas, 12 are accompanied by joy and 15 are accompanied by indifference. Now, Kamauchara Chaitas 54 plus Mahagata 27 make 81 Chaitas and these 81 Chaitas are called Lokiya Chaitas, mundane Chaitas. That means belonging to the world of five aggregates, uh, five aggregates of clinging. And the next group is called Lokutra Chaitas, um, supramundane consciousness. So they can be eight or forty. So let us take forty. Now, the first group, twenty, are what Chaitas? Pat. Huh? Chaitas, and the second group are fruit chaitas. 
in Pali, the first are called Magga and the second group is called Phala. And the first column of the first group is the stream, theta of the stream entrance. And the second column of one's retainer, third column of non retainer and fourth column of Arahant. The same with the fruit consciousness. And the first four of the stream entrant are accompanied by joy and the last one accompanied by indifference. So out of twenty path consciousnesses, how many are accompanied by joy? Sixteen. So sixteen are accompanied accompanied by joy and four are accompanied by indifference. The same with the fruit consciousness. So when we add up eighty one mundane consciousness and forty supramundane consciousness, we get one hundred and twenty one types of consciousness. But if we take supramundane consciousness to be eight, then we have 89 types of consciousness. So, out of these 89 types of consciousness, how many can arise in our minds? Not many. The first column can arise in our minds. The second column? Yes. Third column? Yes. Fourth column? Without the last one. <laughs> And then Kamajra Sopana, the first column, yes, there is possibility. Second column, yes, but no third column. And then Rupa Vajra Chitas, the first column, only if we get jhanas. If we do not get jhanas, they are out of reach for us. And the same with the other types of consciousness. So, these are the 89 or 121 types of consciousness and these are the basis for the further study of Abhidhamma. And these types of consciousness are given in the first book of Abhidhamma along with the mental factors that arise with each of these chaitas. So in the second chapter uh, we will study the mental factors one by one and then we will study the combination of uh, chaitas and chaitisikas. Okay. Now it's time for questions. There was uh, uh, the difference between the Arahan and the Buddha it said that the Arahant have this uh, habit. Uh, if they don't get rid of these habits, uh, they will never become Buddhas, or they will eventually become Buddhas. Also. Uh, according to Theravada teachings, Arahant will, will never become Buddhas. Because there are different, different, different paths, uh, uh, different ways. So, and, and, and Arahant has reached the highest point of his way. And so, according to Theravada teachings, Arahant will not become a Buddha. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, if there's no more questions, we will call it a day. Please rise, put your palms together.